It's time to hit the road and discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Get ready to travel deep into the heart of the Lone Star State, meeting friendly folks and exploring fascinating places. Experience a way of life like nowhere else in the world. As we uncover the rich history and culture of Texas, discover adventure, discover excitement, discover Texas with Annie Studebaker. Today our travels take us to Wimberley, a charming little town known for its many artists and craftsmen. This is where we will meet Jimmy and Nathan Harwell, two metal sculptors that can transform steel, copper, bronze, and other metals into a wide array of beautiful sculptures. Sculptural welding requires extensive knowledge and skill because it involves bringing together materials of different consistency, size, shape, and color. It takes a great deal of dedication, time, and lots of heat to create such amazing works of art. So don't go away as we discover Texas together. I'm Nathan Harwell. I grew up here in Hayes County near Wimberley. Um, went to high school in Wimberley. Went to Germany for a year out of, uh, right out of high school as a long-term foreign exchange student. Came back, uh, went to Texas State for a year, uh, and then figured out I wanted to study architecture. Looked around and decided to go out to, to Tucson, to the University of Arizona. Graduated with it from a five-year program, Bachelor of Science in Architecture. And uh, moved on to work for firms in San Francisco, Austin, New York. Came back and ended up uh, working in Corpus Christi and getting my license there and uh, fished offshore for three years out of Port Aransas on uh, private charter fishing boats. But I came back about three years ago from that and started working with my dad and freelancing and doing architecture again. And that's when I got into doing these, the tree lamps, which is a really an invention of my father's um, that he developed with the Wimberley Glassworks glass blower Tim Dijon and um, they they came up with this idea of uh, the tree lamp itself being like a almost like a steel bonsai and a shade blowing a shade over it to create the actual lamp and I think he sold over a hundred of them yeah over the course of 15 years so um, it's really it's it's a very technical uh, process of actually building up this three-dimensional shape out of uh, rod and so it's you, he developed the techniques you know over making over iterations of making one and another one and another one and and so that's really the that's the art of it is his you know figuring out how to create this shape yeah i grew up in this shop right here basically and watched the shop go up as a child and so you know i learned to weld at a young age um, work on cars and go-karts and motorcycles and you know all that kind of stuff so that's where it really all began, was with my mom. She knew he had the artistic talent. You know, it's always been there. And um, he's got this impressionistic sort of realism thing going that, you know, it's, he calls it authentic imperfection. But it's true, I mean, it's, if you try and be too perfect with things, then they don't look very authentic sometimes. You know, and that's what this is with these trees. But sometimes when you make a mistake, it ends up looking more natural. And, you know, because with the tree, you're, you're not looking at a picture when you're making it. You're, you're, or try, it's this organic shape that you're trying to see as you're making it. You're trying to create it. So you're not trying to model it after anything specific. So that's, that's the other hard part too, is balancing everything out and thinking, well, how would a tree look? But, you know, 
every tree has got its own shape as well. In welding metal, heat is used to melt the work pieces and a filler material is used to form a bond. When it solidifies, a strong joint will be formed. Hold on to your hat, we'll be right back. Okay, so got this branch coming off here that needs a little work. So usually what I'll do is start with one here. You have to kind of have in your head a couple steps ahead of what you want to do with it, which is kind of the hard part kind of knowing what it looked good. Not looking at something and copying it, but making something look realistic. That's organic. You have to think, what would a tree look like? Fit that up into there. And then these two can kind of branch out in their own direction. Oh, and one of these, um, probably about 80 hours. When you get good at it, but then it's, you know, it's, it just depends on how much detail you want to put into it too. You can, you can, leave, you can, you can go far with it. You can go really far with it. How, how many branches you want to put on it and how much thought you want to put into everything. You know, never leave an end like a factory end. I always try and cut everything so that it... It's got some weight to it. The base is made out of half inch plate steel. So there's that layer of that and then now the rod is, is quarter inch rod. So I bet you it weighs at least 45 pounds, 50 pounds when it's done. It's definitely an exercise in trial and error. Looking at it and thinking if that looks right. Does it look balanced like a tree would look? You know, or does something need to come up? Sometimes just bending a branch up further is what it needs. You know, and, and also looking at the negative space. Because the negative space is what balances out the weight of the material in certain places. One thing is too, you can't rush the you can't rush the steel. You have to wait till it's hot. It's kind of the opposite of what you think. You have to bend it ahead of where you where you want it to go. The lamps are done by a 
certified, uh, I'm not sure what, he's an electrician, but the lamps are all UL listed. So they've got UL listed parts and connectors and they're totally safe. You know, so yeah, it's starting to look more like a branch. And then we come in with eighth inch rods off of these. And that's what really makes the finished product look real more realistic. You know, it only goes so fast, so <laughs> you have to you have to let it get you know to the plasticity where you can move it by hand. Because if you just if you try and bend it when it's still cold, it just it'll just wear you out. The whole thing gets wire buffed, and uh, after that we we clean it up again with uh, like paint thinner or acetone and then spray it with a clear coat and that's that's the two two coats of clear and and then we also have to build the harp which holds the all the the lampshade itself and the piece that the bulb screws into so there's a couple other parts you know steps at the end that are pretty, um, pretty technical too. So, but when it's done, you can't see any wiring or I mean, you just see the cord coming out from it. And, and yeah, I think it's reflective too of this area. You know, you have the, the blue hole and Jacob's Well and the Blanco River and Cypress Creek and all this water flowing out of these hills around here and the cypress trees are really part of this landscape and so that's really what this tree is inspired by is the cypress tree you know and so it's it's neat in that way that it reflects a tree from this area and people have these from all over the United States, you know, but cypress trees are a really special tree that we have here in Central Texas. And bald cypress. I'm Jimmy Harwell, and I've lived here in Wimberley 58 years and have done all kinds of work. Uh, Oh, all kinds of welding. To actually got into making cowboy spurs and bits. Pretty nice stuff uh, with silver overlaid and engraved and all this kind of stuff. But anyway, I signed up for a blacksmith course at Austin Community College. Well, not enough people signed up so the class didn't make. So I moved into an art metal class and they were doing this technique. They weren't doing this particular type of stuff, but they were, it was, I think they call it tack and bend. So I learned the technique right away because I was already an accomplished welder. The instructor said, well, just make whatever you want. So I made a longhorn bull, just like this one back here. And, uh, he came around and he just was amazed at how it looked and he says, well, you know, you could, uh, you could sell that. And I thought, really? So I kept it, but I made another one and a horse of the same scale. And I took him to a gallery in Wimberley and I had him in the back of my truck. And so the owner came out and looked at him and my experience with galleries has been that they always want to take them on commission rather than purchase them. But he paid me cash for them right there in the parking lot. So guess what? <laughs> I says, this could be something for me to do. And so I made, uh, I've made all kinds of steel pieces and whatnot, but I got into making these lamps for the Wimberley Glassworks and he would blow the shades for them and I would make the bases and I think we made 128 of them 
during our time doing business together. And so, and they're all signed, dated, numbered, and so they're out there. <laughs> Other than that, I make them for the uh, Homes for Our Troops and they auction them and the money goes to the homes that they're building for these disabled veterans. So that's a super good cause and I encourage people to support that. So, but then I went blind in my left eye and so I quit making them. And so now my son's making them and he's doing a really super job and I couldn't be happier. So that's kind of where we're at today. <laughs> Each piece is unique in its own way and could not be duplicated, even in your wildest dream. So, and to me, that makes it, people like that. They don't want something that everyone else has. And uh, so that, that alone makes them more desirable for people. Hold on to your hat, we'll be right back. Right now, making the fish for the fishermen. And it's gotta be like about the right size. Uh, not too heavy, not too light. And usually I do a stencil, but this one I'm just gonna draw it out. It's just a basic fish cut out of, uh, with a plasma cutter. So I usually do, I fish down at the coast a lot, so I usually do a redfish. Something like easy to recognize as a fish. Yeah, there we go. And got my ground. Should be good to go. Some eye protection. Are we okay looking at that thing? Yeah, as long as you don't have, uh, I mean, just like regular glasses is good. It, it's not, it's nothing like a welder. There's a fish. I'm gonna knock this off real quick. Just a little bit of. What are you doing now? It's, there's a little bit of the, when you cut through the slag, they call it. So, you just, it hammers right off usually pretty good. Hit it with the belt sander. Highlights the edges. Yeah, so you can see it a lot better.
So tell me, what kind? What is this you're using? Steel. Uh, 16 gauge mild steel. Steel. Wow. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Do what you have to do. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna wire the fish on now. That is so cute. And it's just a it's a brass rod, so it's pretty soft. So the fishing line is brass. Yeah, exactly, and that's part of what the rod has spring to it, and that's part of the the whole deal too. There we go. Seeing what it takes to transform metal into spectacular work of art has been an amazing experience. If you have an idea for a metal sculpture, whether it's miniature or monumental, just remember that Nathan and Jimmy can bring it to life. This is Annie Studebaker. Thanks for joining us on Discover Texas. We'll see you on the road soon.